to, to begin with, a lot of the men were afraid of these planes. Um, they would work on them, but they really weren't too anxious to fly in them. They were a, a very hot airplane. They had very stubby wings, a cigar-shaped fuselage. And when they were being developed, a lot of these things crashed. They had absolutely no ability to, to glide. Um, if you get engine trouble, you, you sank like a stone. And um, when they were being developed out of Tampa, Florida, so many of them crashed into the bay there that it was called Iron Bottom Bay. And then Senator Truman was called down to investigate this new plane, what was wrong. I didn't know that when I joined the squadron. And I enjoyed flying in them. And when, I, when, when they took off, I had to get in the bomb bay because, to balance the plane so I wouldn't be back in the tail. But immediately upon taking off, you'd crawl back and sit back there in, in my own little world in this glass plexiglass bubble back there with such a, a sense of freedom and, again, this sense of they're letting me fly. Um, and I loved it until one day we take, took off in one of these things. I think we were flying over to Pearl Harbor. And we got up a couple of thousand feet and I don't know how many miles away from the base. And the left end en engine exploded. Um, I heard this big bang. And I turned around and all the smoke is pouring back through the bomb bay. And I look out on the, on the left wing and it's burning. And I had, you, were, you were a headset, and I, I heard the pilot calling uh, our base, announcing that we're in trouble, emergency, turning back to come to back to the base. And with, with the plane's reputation, I was surprised that he was going to try and fly it back. I thought, we're all going to bail out of this thing, get out of it, because it, you can't fly in one engine, theoretically. And to get into my place in the plane, there was a little hatch back there, which I would open up to get in or out of it. And you wear a harness and you wear a chest chute, which makes you kind of fat if you want to get into a small space. And up to that time, I'd always thought, to, if I had to bail out of this thing, this hatch is too small. I couldn't get out. I'd have to take off my chute somehow or put it back on in the air. I never quite figured that out. But in those few minutes waiting for the pilot to tell me to bail out, I was anxious to get out of that plane. That hatch looked like a barn door. I was, I was ready to sail out and trying to remember all the things we'd been taught about what you're supposed to do when you bail out. But the pilot, um, I could hear him calling the tower saying, we have an emergency, we have an engine on fire. And I remember the tower responding, the fire truck is not here. Can you circle the base a couple of times? <laughs> and I was old enough to realize that was stupid, and the, the pilot didn't talk to them anymore. He, he knew it was stupid, too. Or, or maybe he said, we're coming in on a, a, a head-end approach. Uh, we're not going to circle or anything else. And he did, and he made it. We made it back um, in a very rough landing that um, didn't do much for the landing gear. But we all stood around watching the fire trucks come up, um, blow this gas foam onto the engines. Um, I went back into the plane because I'd forgotten the mail, and I had to bring that out. Um, they never, to this day, I think, figured out uh, what had happened. And after about another hour, they warmed up another plane, and we took off.